Hi, my name is Leela and I'm a member of Engineering for All, and this is the second video of our online workshop series. Today's video is focused on electrical engineering. Engineering for All is a nonprofit based in downtown San Jose that's focused on providing engineering education to elementary schoolers in the area. For the past year, we've been providing in-person workshops and clubs, but because of the coronavirus crisis, we've had to move our operation online, which is why we've been doing this online workshop series. Today, we'll be teaching about electrical engineering by introducing circuits and having students complete a short Rube Goldberg project that shows how a, a circuit uses energy to accomplish a task at the end. Also, another thing that's different from the last video that we did is this video is going to um, include input from everybody on the Engineering for All board. So you'll see other team members besides me, Leela, um, such as Jade, Connie, Yushoshi, and a circuit is a complete path around which electricity can flow. It must include a source of electricity, like a battery. An electric circuit works by providing a closed loop to allow current to flow through a system. Electrons must be able to flow through the circuit, completing a path from one side of the power source to the other. Now Connie is going to show us an example of how a circuit works. This here is a basic circuit that I made using my SNAP circuit kit and it includes all of the essential components of a circuit. So first we have the power source which comes from these two batteries and then we have a switch that we can turn on and off and in this case we're trying to power um, a motor uh, for a fan. Um, so as you can see everything is connected so it makes a full circuit and so nothing will short. And when we turn the switch off, the electricity won't be able to flow completely and um, the power won't get to the motor so it will stay off. But when we turn it on, everything will flow and the motor will turn on. So I just turned it on and as you can see the fan is spinning because the motor is going. And then when I turn it off, this will cut off the electricity flow. And motor will be turned off. The example you guys just saw of a snap circuit can be applied to our everyday lives as well. Circuits can be found in many household appliances, one common one being the lighting systems in your houses. When you turn lights on, you press switches to turn it on and turn it off. What pressing the switch does is that it creates a pathway for the electricity to flow so that the light bulb can be powered. When you turn the switch off, you then block the electricity from flowing, so no power reaches the light bulb and it turns off. Light bulbs are circuits that are on a much larger scale than snap circuits, but there are also circuits that are a lot smaller. Circuits can be found in multiple places at all of your electronic devices, and they're made to be really small so they can fit inside them. These are called printed circuit boards, and they have a lot of different electrical components that are all connected with metal to allow electricity to flow through them. Okay, so now that we know what a circuit does, we could model a circuit um, by creating a Rube Goldberg machine with items that could be found at home. So a Rube Goldberg machine is um, made to complete a simple task with several really creative steps. Um, Rube Goldberg machines are often activated by a burst of energy at the beginning, such as a push from the human operator. Um, so this burst of energy carries throughout all the stages of the machine in order to complete the task. This is similar to an electric circuit because the energy from the power source must be carried to the output area and around the full circuit. In order to model a circuit with a Rube Goldberg machine, we have to make sure that all of our stages form a full circle. And this is an extra step that is not required of the standard Rube Goldberg machine. So, here's an example of a Rube Goldberg machine that we made. So now we're going to apply the engineering design process to the Rube Goldberg. So if you recall, the engineering design process starts with asking the question or identifying the problem you want to solve. We must do that here. So before building a Rube Goldberg, you have to decide what task it will complete. 
Uh, some basic examples include making a balloon go into the air or dropping a marble into the cup. It's usually something really simple, nothing too crazy. The next steps of the engineering design process are brainstorming, prototyping, and designing. In these steps, you map out what it is you want to do. It is also important to draw out your design before building. Some like common components of Rube Goldberg machines are an inclined plane, which is basically like a ramp, or dominoes, like a domino effect. Um, you can use Jenga blocks or something if you have them. So now comes the actual building process, which is pretty self-explanatory. Here's where you build your Rube Goldberg. So after the build step comes the testing step of the design process. Here's where you would troubleshoot the machine. Almost always a plan comes together in your head or on paper, but doesn't exactly work out like that um, when it's actually built. Um, testing can help identify what works and what doesn't. So finally, the last step of the process is to redesign or improve. Here's where you would take the parts of the group Goldberg that maybe don't work as well as you thought they would and improve them and make them better. So now that you have all these steps in mind, it's now time to try and create your own Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, good luck! So uh, that was it for this. Um, so as you can see, the uh, electronics has to do with this activity because in one way, everything flows together to one certain spot to make it all happen. Like for electricity, you flip on a switch or turn it off in order for the lights to turn off and on. And then for the Rube Goldberg project, you start off with something and then a lot of different steps along the way to make one simple task work. And that's what we were trying to accomplish. And then we have also stated the design process and we are saying that these are engineers because they have used the design process. They asked themselves the questions, they started brainstorming what to do, they started prototyping many different ideas on how to make this one simple task work. They designed their final prototype, they built it, and then they test it, and then they redesigned to improve what to improve what they wanted to do to make it more efficient. Um, thank you, that was all.